Okay, let's start building the topic APIs. We already have a get mapped to slash topics that we built in unit one, and uh, we got this method executed when you did a get request to slash topics. And what this method does is just creates a new list and sends it back. So you're creating pretty much a new list for every request. What I'm gonna do in this tutorial is move this over to a separate business service so that there is just one list. And then every time there's a request that comes in, uh, that list itself is sent rather than creating a new list every time. This is not really a change to the API itself, but I'm gonna introduce you to the concept of business services in Spring. Now, how do you create a business service? You start with a simple Java class. So I'm gonna to go to the topic package and I'm gonna create a new Java class called topic service. And uh, now I want this to be a business service. Now, what do I mean by a business service? In Spring, business services are typically singletons. When the application starts up, Spring creates an instance of this service, and then it keeps that in its memory, right? It registers that instance. And you can have other classes and other uh, services or other controllers, which depend on this, right? It declares a dependency and says, hey, Spring, I need that service. And then Spring knows that this is an instance that it's created and it's gonna inject it to those different classes. Now, how do I declare that this is a business service? How do I tell Spring that this needs to be a business service? I do that by using an annotation, call that service. So this add service is what's called a stereotype annotation. So if I import this, you can see it's arg spring framework stereotype. This is something that marks this class as a spring business service. And when the application starts up again, like I said, it's gonna detect in the class path all the classes which have this add service annotation. It's gonna create an instance of all those classes. It's gonna register it, right? It's gonna make a note of it. And now in any other class, let's say in the topic controller, you want an instance of that service. It's not gonna create a new instance every time. Like I said, it's a singleton. It's, it needs the instance that Spring created. How do you ask Spring for that? You ask for it by first creating a private member variable private topic service, topic service, right? So I have this private variable, and now I need to tell Spring to inject it. Because remember, who is initializing this topic controller class? You've written this class here, right? You've marked it as a REST controller. Now who's saying new topic controller? You're not doing that. It's actually Spring which is doing it. So when Spring creates an instance of this class, it's also gonna look at all the member variables and see if any of them has a dependency to topic service, and then it's gonna inject that. Now, how do you declare the dependency? You declare the dependency by another annotation, which is called at auto-wired. Now, at auto-wired is, again, a spring annotation, which marks this as something that needs dependency injection. Now, what's gonna happen is, these are the two classes in the class path, right? Spring is gonna look at this and say, okay, this is a service, creates a new instance and registers it. And now it says, okay, this is a REST controller, creates a new instance. And when it creates an instance, it sees there is an auto-wired annotation to the topic service. It looks at its registry and sees if there is an instance of topic service that was already created. Well, it's created from this. So it's gonna take that instance and inject it to this. So when you write your methods in your controller, you can rest assured that there is an instance of topic service that's available for you, all right? Now what I'm gonna do is move this over to the topic service. I'm gonna have a member variable here. I'm gonna call it topics, and uh, this is gonna be from java.util. So I have a static initialization block, which initializes the topics to be this list. And now what I can do is create a method here. Let's say public which just returns this list of topics. So you have one copy of this topics list and you're not creating a new one every time. But now in my topic controller, I can call that method 
topic service dot get all topics. All right. So this, when the request comes into slash topics, if it's a get request, it's going to call the service, call the method on that service. This method is going to return this list which has already been created. And again, this is initialized just once. So there's only one copy of this list. All right, so let's run this and make sure everything still works fine. So if I were to access localhost 8080 slash topics, I'm gonna get all the topics like I should. But uh, now what's happened is it's moved over to a service. This is important because we're gonna be making changes to this list and we're going to be adding topics, removing topics, so it's handy to have it as a separate list. In the next tutorial, we're going to be implementing a GET request to an individual topic. We're going to say topics slash spring, and I want to get just this topic instance. We'll implement that in the next video.